If you mention pepper mortgages online, you're going to have a small cohort of people who will insist that pepper are not a bank, pepper can't do this, pepper can't do that, and the whole thing is a sham and uh, they're not entitled to sell properties or whatever. I have received an email there this morning from a firm of solicitors in Dublin. This is very, very typical of the type of email I receive all the time after a bid X1 or other online auction. In this particular case, they are emailing me to ask me to approve a deed of assurance or a deed of transfer from the receiver in this case to my client. And my client is one who would have bought quite a lot of property at BidX1 auctions and other online auctions over the last number of years. I'm looking at the deed of assurance here and just for the sake of clarity and uh, even though I know I'm wasting my time because the people who believe what they believe and believe basically in fantasy law are going to continue to believe in fantasy law but I'm telling you what the reality is. So this deed of transfer that I'm being asked to approve, the only aspect of this quite frankly that I'm being asked to improve is, uh, approve is the name of the, my client is the name right, because in the deed of assurance or the deed of transfer it says the transferor is the registered owner of the property known as etc etc so let's say it's in county Offaly or county Meath or county wherever by mortgage that's a b then says by mortgage date at such and such a date in 2006 or 2007 or 2008 or whenever before the celtic tiger crash made between the transferor of the one part and first act of PLC, the bank of the other part, uh, a charge here and after called the charge or mortgage, it was provided that the transferor mortgaged and charged the property as security for all monies the payment was intended to secure. The transferor covenanted, in other words, promised that with the bank on demand to repay to the bank all the money. Money owing upon the security should become due and payable upon demand for payment being made by the bank by notice in writing in the manner therein stipulated, etc., etc. At any time after the money owing upon the security thereof should have become due and payable, the bank should have power by instrument in writing to appoint any person or persons to be a receiver. So this mortgage or charge has within it the power for the bank first act of PLC to appoint a receiver or receivers of the assets thereby secured and have that uh, receiver sell the assets. So that's the original power of the bank on foot of the mortgage or charge. It goes on then to say at C by various deeds of assurance Pepper Finance Corporation Ireland designated activity company that is the mortgagee a company incorporated in Ireland acquired all the right, title and interest uh, of First Act of Ireland in various loans and related security, including the mortgage and liabilities secured thereby. So this paragraph tells us that Pepper Finance, DAC, acquired all of the charge or interest of First Act of in this property. Then it goes on to tell us at D that by an instrument in writing, in other words, a deed here and after called the appointment dated in 2023 or 2024 or whenever, the mortgagee, that is Pepper, pursuant to the powers in that behalf contained in the charge, appointed the receiver to be the receiver of the premises, which appointment was accepted by the receiver on such a date in 2023 or 24. So now Pepper, having bought the charge, have appointed a receiver. At E, paragraph E, it says, the monies secured by the mortgage became payable by the transferor to the mortgagee. In other words, Pepper asked the registered owner, the original borrower, for the money prior to the appointment. The money wasn't paid and are still owing. And then at F, it says, pursuant to the powers contained in the charge, the receiver on behalf of the transferor has agreed with the transferee, that's my client, for the sale to the transferee, that's my client, of the premises at a price of whatever. 
And then it goes on to say, in pursuance of the agreement and in consideration of the sum of whatever paid by the transferee, etc., etc., the receiver transfers the premises to the transferee. In other words, the receiver, on behalf of Pepper, who bought the loan from First Active, transfers the property to my client, and my client pays the receiver the money. That is how it happens, quite frankly, in the real world. This is absolutely bog standard, goes on week in, week out, all over the place with receiver sales, bid X1 auctions, etc, etc. So this, to be clear, is a situation where a person borrowed money from First Active, was unable to pay, First Active sold the loan to Pepper, Pepper appointed a receiver, a receiver has now sold the property at a bid X1 auction, my client has bought it. What's going to happen now? What will happen now is you'll just have the completion of the transaction in the normal way, my client will then well, will we'll hand over the balance of the purchase money, whatever he agreed to pay at the auction, will pay the money, get the closing documents, we'll get the closing documents, and we will then go on to register his interest, uh, the transfer of ownership, the change of ownership at Land Registry. So my client will then become the registered owner at Land Registry. He will pay the stamp duty first, and then we will apply to have him registered as owner at Land Registry. That Land Registry ownership then, when he's registered, that ownership or title is guaranteed by the state. And that's it. He can do with that property what he wants. He can live in it, he can let it out, he can sell it, he can improve it, he can, as I say, he can enjoy that property as uh, he has a constitutional right to enjoy any property that he owns and he owns this having bought it from the receiver and that's a pepper uh, appointed receiver pepper having bought or acquired the interest in the original first act of mortgage or charge this is as i say bog standard stuff and still unfortunately there are a small number of people who will promote the fantasy the misinformation that somehow Pepper don't have the right to buy the property or buy the loan, don't have the right to appoint a receiver, don't have the right to buy or to sell the property at a bid X1 auction or any other auction. That is not the case. And as I say, this transaction is absolutely typical, a bog standard transaction involving a receiver appointed sale at a bid X1 auction and ultimately my client uh, or other people's clients will simply be registered as the owner and that title, that ownership, will be guaranteed by the state. No matter how many times I make a video about this, about Pepper or about BCM Global or about uh, Link Financial or anybody else, smart mortgages or whoever, might be buying charges or mortgages from the likes of Ulster Bank or First Active or from Bank of Scotland, or from somebody who may have left the Irish market, no matter how many times I make a video about this, people will still come along and say, oh, Pepper can't do that. Anyway, hope you find the video useful. If you do, I'd appreciate if you hit the thumbs up button down below. Thank you very much.